Well, or that was the fox hole. Uh, that was the fox yeah. hole. This amateur radio roundtable is brought to you in part by ICOM America. All right, welcome. I'd like to welcome all of our viewers out there tonight. This is Amateur Radio Roundtable. I'm Tom Medlin, W5KUB. And this is uh, Tuesday, January 29th. Katie had to remind me I usually don't know what day it is. But, uh, hey, we're going to have a great show tonight. We've got uh, Rich from CQ. We've got Katie with us. We've got Martin FG with us. We're going to talk about uh, ham radio tonight, what's changed, what hadn't changed in the last 60 years. It's going to be really cool. Um, Dave K with us tonight to talk about Quartz Fest. We're watching for him in a chat room. We'll connect with Dave when we find him. Uh, but we will uh, we'll go right on with the show. If you're listening on the International Shortwave Station, WBCQ, on 5130, uh, you can also watch the show on the Internet. If you've got Internet, go to W5KUB.com, W5KUB.com, and uh, you can watch the show there. Join us in the chat room. Also, if you're out there listening on Shortwave, send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Send that email to Tom at W5KUB.com. Just wanted to give you a couple quick updates. Hey, one thing we've done uh, uh, this week is we've expanded our phone system. You know, you guys can only be, be, have been able to call in one person at a time, and uh, you know, where we're talking and and uh, other people call in, they usually hang up and they, you know, they just give up. We've expanded our phone system now where we can uh, take up to 1,000 calls. Believe it or not, 1,000 calls at the same time. No joke. That's why I've hired Chris, my son, here, to come in here tonight and help. He's going to help take care of those 1,000 calls. Let's see if I can bring Chris in. Here's Chris right there. Chris, wave. 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 There you go. So anyway, he's the person going to take the 1,000 calls. Okay. Now, we also have telephone numbers in 65 countries. 65 local numbers in local countries where you can call in and uh, uh you know join the show and uh i'll put that number up and tell you how to do it a little later but uh um uh, there it is right there 65 countries 1000 simultaneous calls boy this is going to be cool we're going to try that out tonight uh so let's see uh katie how you uh, let me mention one thing josh is working tonight he's working late out in california he's they're trying to hire some new engineers I'm, I'm guessing these are uh, software engineers. I think that's what Josh does. And uh, uh, so he'll be working till about 7 out there. That's 9 o'clock our time. He may dial in and become one of those thousand. He may check uh, uh, check in with us about 9 o'clock. I don't know. And uh, Jason, uh, you guys know Jason. Uh, he, uh, he's been uh, with us a few times lately. He's out at the studios, a last man standing out there maybe operating the rig a little bit and this is tuesday night i think this is the night that they actually shoot the show live so he's probably in the audience uh right about now uh, getting ready to watch the show out there uh start so we won't be hearing from jason today all right so let's uh let's uh jump around a little bit here and let's just see who we got on the uh connection here tonight let's first start with uh katie katie how you doing Katie, can I, Katie, I'm not hearing you, Katie. I'm still not hearing Katie. Why am I not hearing Katie? Katie, is your mic muted? Why am I not hearing Katie? Well, you know what, say something, Katie. Hello, 
I'm there better. we go. How about now? Is that better? All right. Oh. Sorry, it was. I think I was clicking it too much, and it kept turning on and off. So yeah. Hello, Tom. Hello, everybody out there watching. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood here in Wyoming. <laughs> it's been about uh, I don't know below zero or so with a wind chill, and we've gotten probably over two feet of brand new snow since Friday, and oh, we've had man. some horrendous winds. So there's just huge drifts everywhere, and. Uh, so it's been a good time to mostly stay inside and get some ham radio in this weekend. Um, so looking forward to heading to Hamcation next week, get out of the snow and into some fun in the sun. Well, you know, we're going to be going in here too, but Katie, I knew you were going to be wearing your hat tonight. So uh, I, I, I dug mine out. Let's see. I, I dug mine out. Uh, we don't oh, normally we don't normally have to wear it that much here, you know, in Memphis. And but anyway, just to, you know, being <laughs> being a spirit with you guys. So uh, well, man, two, the, two uh, feet, two feet know, of snow. My, yeah, I wore that Fargo hat last week, and I actually wore it today. I had to go out in the snow, but but that tonight I just wear this hat. This is actually one of my own creations that I made, and um, so I just thought, well, it kind of goes with the sweater I'm wearing, and there I am. Okay, great. Hey, um, let's see uh, what else is going on here. We've got, uh, let's jump up and say hello to Martin. Now, Martin? I'm here. If y'all going to put hats on, I'll put mine on, too. What a, hang on a hey, hey, guys, just hang on one second here. What's going on, guys? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I am. Yeah? What's going on? Hey, Tom. This is our super Okay. Hey, I'm going to do the same thing, Rich. <laughs> yeah. He said that he had shot your guest on your show tonight in the face with a shotgun at this address. And I think you have a crazy fan. We do. Uh, we had somebody in the chat room just trying to cause trouble while I go, and we uh, blocked him. Okay. Yeah, we're live right now. I, I, yeah. Hey, hey, thanks for coming, guys, but you know, I don't think anything happened. Do you have that girl on the... Katie or yeah, you know, you come. Would y'all mind coming in here and just being? Uh, well, we can't be on the show. Well, oh, will you come in here? Can we just at least just? Oh, well, I don't know, like guess guess and talking to her. Yeah. yeah, she's on the show right now. She's a I remote. Mean, uh, Adams or what's her? What was her name? Katie Allen. Katie Allen. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Make sure come, come on, come on back a second. Okay. Just, just a second, guys. I mean, so is it? Can I just mention you guys are here and? Show, okay, come on, come on back. Well, we can we can hear them. Yeah, Tom, your your mic is live, so. Uh, okay. Hey guys, you guys aren't gonna believe this. You guys aren't gonna believe this, but I've got half the city police department here in the studio. And uh, man, what's that? Is that an M16? What is, is that an M16 you got there? Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I want, I want to do, I want to do that. Uh, guys, anyway, uh, somebody called them and made a threat about the show about shooting somebody. So uh, they're just here to check and make sure everything's okay. Yeah, are you serious? You can watch it right. You can look right there. Hey, Katie. Uh, Katie, say hello. Yeah. Let me get you on here, Katie. Hang on, Katie. Katie. Uh, Katie, say uh, hello. Katie. Yes, Katie. Clearly not shot. Hi, guys. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. They just wanted to make sure everything's okay. Yeah, I will. All is well I'll, I'll, here I'll in Wyoming. I'll do that. I'll do that. Thank you, guys. I thought I was getting arrested for something, man. Okay. Well, that was interesting. Wow. That was interesting. So we wow, got a, we got a, first. We got a little troublemaker, I guess, out here on the show somewhere. Chris noticed him earlier, <clears throat> but you know that was all. That was uh, that was okay. The guys got here real fast, didn't they, Chris? Yeah. <laughs> wow. All there right. All right. So we were gonna by. go. We were gonna go to Martin. And I'm sure they'll be looking at that phone number too that uh, called that in. Uh, I imagine this is not over with yet. So, uh, anyway, let's go to Martin. Martin, how you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing great here in Mississippi. It uh, got really cold this afternoon. We got down to 61 degrees. Oh, did it? Oh, I don't know what it got here, Martin. It's uh. Yeah. Well, it's getting down colder, Martin. It's 30. <laughs> it's 30 degrees. 
30 degrees here, Martin. It's like 41 <laughs> degrees tonight. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. All right. Well, Martin, I'm looking forward to talking to you uh, in a little while about ham radio, if we don't have any other interruptions here. And uh, that's going to be fun. All right. So let, I, let's just jump up here. Uh, Katie, let's get started here. Uh, we had a little interruption there, but it was some uh, interesting entertainment, I guess. Yeah, that was definitely a new one for the show and I didn't, tonight. I didn't, so. I didn't realize my mic was still on. I, I, I actually, <laughs> I went to the other end of the house there with with the uh, police. Uh, okay. Well, we thought you were. We actually kind of. I don't know. Certainly from my side, I thought there was some kind of joke. It was some local ham <laughs> stopping in and just making a joke because we couldn't quite hear well, everything. Well, I, I didn't. I didn't actually recognize the guy that came in in the dark suit. He didn't look familiar. Yeah. And then I and then I, I realized uh, those were, you know, it was actually the SWAT team. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Hey, why don't you introduce uh, Rich, Katie, and you guys talk about CQ Magazine, okay? All right. That sounds good. Well... For all the way from here in Wyoming off to the East Coast with Rich Moses and W2VU from CQ Magazine. Oh, Rich has got his hat it's on tonight, hat too. Night. I it's, figured it's I'd put on night. my CQ hard hat. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> it keeps all your brain cells in while you're trying to edit the magazine, right? That's right. It, it keeps my head from exploding, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so how are things going with CQ right now? Pretty Rich? good. Um, in fact, I want to start out with a, a note to our, our very patient print subscribers that uh, the December print issue lives, and uh, it's in the mail. A lot of people have uh, gotten theirs already, and uh, we, we really apologize for the delays. Um, and uh, it's a, a challenging time to be in the publishing business as uh, you know if you watch the business at all. Um, and uh, our plan is to uh, slowly get caught back up over the next few months here to uh, hopefully be back on schedule with the print edition as we have been consistently with the digital. So right. um, well, that's great news. I was very happy to uh, have it show up on my doorstep today um, or yesterday, actually. <clears throat> um, so moving to February, though, which uh, will be out in the digital edition in just a few days. That's our uh, QRP special for the year. And uh, we've got a dozen different QRP focused articles. And for those of you out there who may not know what QRP means, it's uh, low power ham radio, usually five watts or less, sometimes 10 watts or less. And uh, it's amazing what you can do with just a few watts. In fact, um, one of our, uh, our QRP columnists, um, K A Lila, I can't speak. I need the hat back on to K A eight S M A. His uh, column for this issue is his top ten reasons for operating QRP. So that's a, a good starting point. Um, we've got uh, QRP Marconi and me N K six A's uh, story of uh, hamming vacation to Italy that also took him to the Marconi Museum, and that's yes. going to be the headquarters for the. Um, 2022 World Radio Sport Team Championship is Bologna, right. Uh, right. where the Marconi Museum is. So that's uh, going to be very interesting. Um, got W2JAZ with a piece on traveling light, uh, QRP with a software defined radio and a Windows tablet, so that uh, he has very, he can go wherever he needs to with uh, just a, a tablet and a little uh, dongle uh, radio. Mm -hmm. Um, we've got a review of the Soda Beams Tactical 7000 HDS portable antenna mast. Really uh, cool collapsible mast that you can use for QRP expeditions out in the field and things like that. Um, we've got NJ3K explaining how he worked not only 100 DX countries QRP, but CW and mobile at the same time. So that's quite an accomplishment, and uh, it's a really fun story. Uh, K9GH writes about QRP on the cruise of a lifetime. Um, this was not your typical cruise. He was uh, out with his son's scout troop on a uh, cruise in the Florida Keys. One of the uh, adults going with him brought a, a QRP rig along and had a, a great time, not only hamming, but bonding with his uh, son as well. Uh, oh, a couple of fun. It was, uh, reading this. 
a um, couple of project articles, um, an ideal low current and ultra high resistance meter by K2 AOP. Um, you're working with low power gear, you're often dealing with very low current levels, and uh, it's hard to read them sometimes. So he's got a, a great project for doing that. And uh, W0 PCE has a project for building an amplified absorption wave meter. Um, again, this is a, this is a 50-year-old design, but uh, still functional today. He updated it and uh, can detect and measure very low levels of RF energy. Again, very handy if you're doing QRP work. Um, and one of my favorites is uh, N4KYW's article called A Little Help from the Kitchen. You know, one of the things that it seems to be common among QRP kits is that they don't come with enclosures. You have to be creative in coming up with your enclosures. And he decided to raid the kitchen cabinet and use some baking tins and roasting pans and things like that for enclosures for his QRP rigs. Really fun article, but we're also very useful. Um, we have the um, results of the 2018 CQ Worldwide Fox Hunting Weekend, which is, is kind of the ultimate QRP because those little Fox transmitters put out milliwatts at, at most. And uh, your challenge there is to listen. Um, and that's our cover story as well. We've got uh, some great pictures there. we got a brand new column by uh, Eric Nichols, KL7AJ, called Analog Adventures, um, keeping in mind that no matter how digital things get, radio itself is still analog and always will be. And uh, so he's starting out with a uh, topic of small signals in honor of uh, the uh, QRP special. And I see I have a guest behind me. You do. <laughs> <laughs> That's unusual. <laughs> um, and uh, finally, for our, our QRP stuff, um, Joe Eisenberg and his kit building column. Uh, Martin, you'll be interested in this. He uh, looks at uh, building the Vectronics 30-meter receiver kit. And, uh, so, uh, and, yeah. Uh, hey, hey, Rich. Mouse. Well, yeah. This is Tom. Hey, let me do this. I'm going to put the three of you guys up here on the screen. I need to go talk with the police, uh, you know, for their report. Uh, there's a bunch of them out there. And uh, I'm going to put the three of you guys up here. Y'all can continue. Martin, I want you to talk about uh, uh, ham radio. And, and Rich, you can help him because you're an old timer too, okay? Thanks. And Katie, you too. And I'll be back I'll be back with you guys in a little while. All right. Good luck. Let me, uh, let me bring, uh, let's see. Is that, I'm trying to see who else I need to bring up. I need to bring Martin in here. You need Martin. Okay. I'm going to get Martin. Look, you guys go ahead. You've got the okay. show. I'll be back in a little while, okay? okay. All right. We're in charge. All righty. See, now is the night we need Glenn Popeil here because he right. would be fun, have fun helping us take over. <laughs> now he's, he's left that cursor in my eye, though. Uh, it's, at least it's not up your nose like it was mine <laughs> earlier. <laughs> so back to the magazine. We've also got some stuff for the non-QRPers among us for those yeah believe that life's too short for QRP. Uh, we've got a great story by PA3EWP on uh, the A35 EUD expedition to the Kingdom of Tonga. A uh, really oh. fascinating story about uh, mm -hmm. operation from the South Pacific. Um, our emergency communications editor, W4ALT, has a, a really good piece on emergency communications and accessibility uh, for people with physical challenges and uh, how Basically, uh, he was doing this in response to a question from a reader as to whether having a disability would be a showstopper in terms of providing emergency communications help. And uh, he talks all about how no, it doesn't. And uh, there are plenty of things for people to do regardless of their ability levels. Right. And, uh, we're starting a new series in our awards column. By the way, we're still looking for a new awards editor. Uh, K1BV has uh, stepped down after 25 years or so. Uh, and uh, I'm covering for the moment, but uh, we're still interested in a new awards editor and uh, USACA um, award manager. So if anyone out there is uh, interested in either of those, talk to me. Uh, what we're doing in the meantime is uh, taking a close look at 
the CQ Award Series, which we don't write about that much in our magazine, and we really should. Um, we're starting out with uh, the CQ DX Awards and uh, talking about them a little bit and how uh, they have their unique personality. Uh, we're going to then cover the CQ DX Field Award and the Worked All Zones Award, uh, USA Counties, WPX, and uh, hopefully by the time I finish writing about all the awards, we'll have found a new award man uh, editor so <laughs> but uh, if anybody's interested uh it's uh, a fun thing to do well, kind of, here. Yeah. Well, bringing that up because since we have people with so many different backgrounds in the chat room or listening mm -hmm. what kind of um skill set would you be looking for for someone to take that role on well traditionally the the person who's held this job has been both writing the awards column every month and administering the USA counties award okay. uh, there's it's just it developed that way it started out as a USA CA column which mm -hmm. grew into a general awards column okay. but uh, there's no need for that to be one person doing both uh, there's no problem with having two different people doing each of them um, for the awards column we need somebody with a real interest in the different award programs that are out there. There's all sorts of fascinating award programs. You know, we, we know about the biggies, the WAZ, DXCC, Worked All Continents. Um, but uh, there's all sorts of smaller award programs out there that can be just as challenging or good starter pro award programs for people who are just getting started. Um, and Ted, you know, brought us a, a whole bunch of them every month for, for 25 years and never ran short. Um, it does require some enough interest to go digging sometimes and to uh, find these awards and then be able to, to write about them and, and what they offer that's uh, unique and, and different. Is this a good starting award or is this a really challenging one? Um, mm. You know, I just, I just had a letter today from someone saying, do you know how long it takes to work 200 fields for the DX Field Award? And mm. yes, I do. And it's not yeah. intended to be an easy award. That's why the basic right. level is 50. Um, so, yeah. I like the County Hunters <laughs> Award. That's yep. not a quick thing to accomplish by yep. any means. 3,077 counties in the United right. States. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> as far as the Counties Award and being the administrator for that, uh, obviously, we need to have someone who is, if obviously, preferably someone who already holds the award and mm -hmm. uh, or, or very very close to it uh, sure. so they need to be a really dedicated county hunter uh, to be able to you know being an award manager is a, is a fascinating thing because you've got to not only be able to look at, at the things people have worked and admire them and acknowledge them but also be able to catch the guys who are trying to pull one over on you sure. um, and uh, so you got to know that Gee, he, this guy in New Jersey said he worked Wyoming on 160 meters at noon in July. I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> uh, it could, it so. could happen every now and then. Right. Weird things do happen from Wyoming on 160 meters. We've we've proven that. <laughs> um, but it would, you know, so he's got whoever this would be would need to be someone who knows is familiar enough with not only all the counties and and what and how but the band conditions and right. something you know if something raises a red flag to be able to um <laughs> um to <laughs> she's just a rock out of your ceiling i think i'm, I'm glad she's uh feeling comfortable around here i still miss dougal sitting in my lap yeah. um so uh yeah so you know you you need to be uh really dedicated county hunter and want to help right. other people along the way to, to the awards as well and uh so anybody who is, is interested and feels that they're qualified for that e either the usaca award manager or the awards editor position um talk to me my uh email address is uh, my call sign w2 victor uniform at cq-amateur-radio.com drop me a note we'll talk um, just a couple of other issue notes here. Um, among more interesting things, we've got uh, 
DX column this month is about uh, the most wanted countries and why. Um, it's got the 25 most wanted countries on the uh, club log list and a look at the top 10 as to what makes them so rare and so difficult to get. Um, contest editor uh, Dave Siddall, K3ZJ, uh, has a really interesting column this month on real-time contest scoreboards on the web. It's a whole new aspect of contesting that uh, not you don't even a lot of people now are not even waiting until the contest is over to try to see how they did um, but they're posting their logs during the course of the contest um, mm. on some of these online scoreboards and so they can keep track of how they their competition is doing during the contest and right. Uh, it, it adds a whole new dimension to uh, competitiveness. I've been reading a little bit about that with the online, you know, like real-time scoring, and it's pretty interesting, and definitely for the super competitive, it's kind of, I think it could be kind of fun just in terms of if you're if you're running neck and neck with, uh, you know, someone else, you know, maybe you, you know, gives you just a kick you need to work a little bit harder or something. But I haven't used it myself, so I'm not really sure how it works. But it's definitely an interesting new way that technology can be brought in. Yeah, definitely. And uh, so obviously it's it's going to be controversial to some extent because every new thing that comes along is. Uh, right. <laughs> you know, we, we still have uh, our spark forever people out there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, resist any change, and uh, the the ongoing battle now, of course, over FT8 as to you know right. whether it's a valid mode, and of course it is. Um, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> right. No. So that uh, pretty much covers uh, most of our February issue of CQ, which uh, should be live in our digital edition on uh, February 1st or 2nd. It's over on the weekend, so I'm not sure uh, right. when it gets posted. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, have the print edition out uh, sometime in February. Uh, we should, we're planning, hoping to get the, the January issue uh, print edition moving in the next uh, three weeks, and then uh, hopefully February, three weeks after that, and mm -hmm. uh, keep scrunching them together a week at a time until we uh, get current. So. Uh, well, that's good news. Everybody's always ha looks forward to seeing it arrive in their mailbox, and we have lots of loyal readers. That yeah, we really appreciate in. everyone's patience and uh, the the great comments that we get about how much they enjoy reading the magazine and mm -hmm. look forward to getting it. Um, yeah. so. CQ is a very quality magazine. I I, I enjoy reading it. Yeah. Exactly. So for me, I'm always, I'm always like I don't. Most of the time, I don't even look at like what month it is because I'm not worried about certain things. So I just like to read the different stories and the content. So to me, it's like if it shows up, that's always a good thing and get to read everything. And like Martin said, there's great, it's got great quality content and it's so readable for every hand. That's one of the things that, you know, that I like about it, that I don't feel like the articles are over my head and I still learn something and um, there's always something new and interesting and you know of course a friend joe's kit building always gets my uh juices flowing for thinking about trying to do a kit again and <laughs> i you haven't gotten in there should. yet but you i know i really should. need to i gotta uh, add it to all know, my extra one of the things that that joe wrote about in his december column was um 3d printed cases we were talking about the enclosures before for kits right. uh 3d printed cases for the ubidex uh kits and uh right. He, he was here in New York a couple of weeks ago for Ham Radio University, and uh, he stopped in for, we, we had lunch together in New York City at Eisenberg Sandwich Shop, and uh, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. But he brought me a uh, one of these 3D printed cases for the Ubidex, because I've been slowly since May working on carving out a case for mine, and it really hasn't been going too far. So he brought that for me, That the guy who made the, the case for him also made one for me so i'm looking forward to uh, actually getting my ubidex kit assembled in a case and uh put it on the air and see if i can actually work anybody uh, you know, 3d printing uh, is a whole other other aspect uh, oh yeah 
of new stuff in ham radio. You can create old knobs and, and dials and things that are very hard to find. Uh, really lots of uh, options there and opportunities. I can send you one of our metal cases for the U-Bit. Why? Well, Appreciate that. Let me let me try this one first and make sure okay. see if it works. And uh, but I have a feeling I, I, I made a wooden case for the uh, Bit X40 that uh, uh -huh. is uh, interesting. But I you know I may get another one of the the single band ones. And if I do, then uh, I will uh, let you know. But I'm still uh -huh. having fun with your uh, MFJ 9200 uh, QRP little oh, CW thing. I love that radio. Yeah, uh, right. I was cleaning you. in the basement this weekend and came opened up a box and I was pleasantly surprised to find my MFJ 40 meter CW cup kit that I built probably to 11 years ago when I worked uh, at the league. But there was a group of us at headquarters that learned to build a kit together. And so I said, oh, I'm going to have to pull that out and try playing with it again. And uh, I have another kit. It was just outside of the shack, so I got that. So I was kind of excited to find that because I knew I had packed it away. And I've been digging through boxes that I haven't looked at in years and figuring out, okay, what can I keep and what do I have to go? But I was really excited I found that kit again. So I was like, yay. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oops, I just pulled my headphones out. <laughs> hey, I have a question for you guys. Um, yeah. Any news on WWV? I haven't heard anything. I've been, you know, and of course with the government shutdown uh, that mm -hmm. uh, delayed everything. But uh, no, I've been I've been checking around and uh, have not heard anything. I don't know okay. if Congress ever finalized the uh, bill that they were, you know, the, the appropriations bill, that whether they put it back in or not. Um, I've been looking around with very little success. Uh, and finding out anything one way or the other. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, last I heard, there's still no funding for it. I saw something on it in a, a news bit not too long ago, but sadly, I don't remember. I don't remember what I ate for breakfast. Never mind what I read a couple weeks ago, <laughs> somewhere along the way. But oh my goodness. Um, so, Martin, what's been going on down in Mississippi with you? Oh. Oh, that's a hard question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I go to work every day. Uh, um, get in about 10.30, 11 o'clock, and then go to lunch at 11.30. And uh, <laughs> get back about 3 o'clock. Uh, well, that's well, nap time then, right? That's yeah. Yeah, good. That's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, scheduled to me, yeah. <laughs> We got lots of new products coming out, uh, but the bands. I've been trying to operate some mobile, but the bands have been so bad. I was trying to uh, get on the air and talk to Tom on forty meters, but I couldn't yep. hear anything today. Uh, this was mobile. Um, we've got a new mobile antenna coming out. It's mm -hmm. a little base loaded cylinder. And you just dial in the frequency that you want. It's it's like a screwdriver, but uh, no coil moving up and down. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, there we were on. Um, we we have here in Wyoming. We have an eighty meter net every evening, and it's at um, five forty five local time for us. And um, I've come down to <laughs> five thirty to check in because. 15 minutes later, whoever's running the net that evening is just completely gone. And it's oh. gotten so bad now that they're starting the early check-ins about 45 minutes before it begins. And today oh. I, I got on um, uh, our uh, net controls over in Powell, which is the other side of the state. And he started off really strong. And I was right at the top of the net, so I didn't have to wait very long. But even in that sh few short minutes, it was already starting to fade away. And um, it's just that's been kind of obnoxious. But over the weekend, um, Dwayne played in the 160 meter contest and had some good luck on 160 meters. And then uh, Winter Field Day was going on, and 
heard this booming station coming out of Southern California with a familiar uh -huh. voice. So we, we worked K7JA, who was working with the Whiskey Six Zulu Echo Club. And I think they they had a great time down there in the snowy parts of Southern California. Although their snow is green, so it wasn't too bad. <laughs> yes, the cowboy net, KE7KK, pops in there, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's been really kind of flaky, but I've been seeing a lot of people posting. They're still making lots of good digital contacts, or, you know, Dwayne's behind me working. Do you work in FT8? He can't hear me. He's got his headphones on. I think he's working FT8 behind me, uh, um, making lots of contacts. But yes. Yeah, he is. Oh, he says yes. So, 80 meter. 80 meter FT8 if you need Wyoming. <laughs> yeah, it's been so, really, really flaky with the bands lately. That's for sure. So, what's happening to the bands? Is it just going long, or just fading out where you can't talk to anybody? Here, they're go. They're just fade. They just disappear. It'd be literally a couple of weeks ago, I came down, and it was about five minutes before the net was to start here. And so I called my mom real quick. I said, okay, I can hear the net operator. Come on over. Since she lives next door and she was going to come check in. And by the time she walked over, got to the front door, I, I had already walked upstairs and met her at the door. I said, he's gone. I can't even hear him. And uh, it was just, just like that. It goes away. It's, it's really uh, frustrating. But what I've, what I've noticed on 40 meters is, uh, uh, if you're trying to operate mobile, uh, they need to be fairly close. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. if it's too far away, your signal is too weak. And what I've noticed is uh, later during the evening, it just just goes along. I and mean, when it goes along, you, you can't work anybody because your signal is too weak using, uh, on mobile. Looks like Tom's back. I'm Hi, back. Tom. You're back. <laughs> oh, yay. Hey, guys. I'm, I'm back. Boss is back. Yeah, I'm back. So, uh, hey, it, it, you've been carrying on without me. That shows the show can go on without me. That's, we, that's, that's great. Well, you fortunately have people that seem to have no problem talking, so that well, works good, out well. Good, good, <laughs> good. Uh, well, you know what? I was going to open the phone lines here in a little while. Uh, I might have to go in here in a minute and help them finish a report. They're, they, they're, they're finishing up my report right now, so I'll probably need to give them a little detail. But everything is hunky dory. Everything is fine here, and uh, um, it was an interesting night, and uh, met a lot of new friends actually. <laughs> so I tell you what, hey, I, are you guys uh, Martin? If I put the phone up and some phone lines come in, phone calls come in, can you or Katie and Rich, you want to talk about it a little bit? Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, now, if you're not ready for that, I won't put it up there yet, but. No, we'll we're it ready. Try. Does it does it matter what we say? <clears throat> no. Yeah, <laughs> you might just make stuff up. <laughs> and uh, Chris is here. Chris can manage the phones there. And uh, let me uh, let me put the number up. Let's see. That right there should work. Right there. All right, I'll be back in a little while, but I'm gonna put you guys back on here, and you guys can uh, uh, finish the show out. I'll be back a little later. Okay. Okay. All right, we'll do our best. Okay. All right. I'll see. All right, so well, everybody's see around. Give us a call. Let's see. Maybe that'll work we have a... up there. Let's see if that works better. Oh, there you go. Tom, remember to kill your mic before you leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> That was definitely an unnerving thing. Yes. Glad you're there tonight, Chris, to help out. Oh. I think Tom might be having a scotch when this is all over. <laughs> <laughs> so, Martin, you were going to talk about how ham radio has changed in the past 60 years. Oh, yeah. You know, it has changed a lot in many ways, but in some ways it has stayed the same. Um. Uh, the equipment has changed, and I mean, you know, we started off with regenerative receivers and moved to superheads, which stayed for a long, long time in lot, lots of different configurations. And um, then from superheads, uh, direct conversion became real popular for home building and 
and uh, then superheads continued to develop. Uh, uh, crystal filters came in, and then real crystal filters, and then uh, from single conversion to double and triple conversion, and back to single conversion when the crystal filters got to be real good, and now SDR is taking over. I mean, it's just totally different mm -hmm. from SDR back to the regenerative uh, receivers when one tube, one active device you could use to hear people from all Hello. over the world. Um, I mean, what else do you see that's changing the equipment side? I I agree with you that you know the the technology has changed significantly. Oh. Um, you know, from uh, let's see, I've got a 1960s vintage uh, little 40 meter transmitter here. Can oh, get wow. on, what? You know, the camera is, uh, is that, that one tube? Yeah, it's, uh, it's one tube. What, what a, is that? It looks like a. It's a 12K5. I've never oh. tried putting it on the air. Oh. I built this out of uh, a project article in CQ about uh, 10 years ago, I guess. Oh, and, wow. Uh, it's radio art, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but you know, at the same, you know, just recently I built a little uh, 30 meter cricket transceiver. And it's one board this, this big. And uh, you've got a whole transceiver on there along with, with a key built into the board. And wow. uh, the, the battery is, is on the board. So all you have to plug into it is an antenna and a set of headphones. Um, and unfortunately, 30 meters hasn't been awake enough for me to know how well it really works yet. Because well, when well, I, yeah, one. It, I, I hear s signals, or no, I don't hear signals. I hear band sounds and I went oh there must be a problem with the receiver and I went and turned on my my big rig and no there's nothing wrong with the receiver the band was just completely dead uh, so, <laughs> and that hasn't changed in 60 years propagation although we've learned to we've learned a lot about propagation in the past 60 years I'd say that for sure uh, we understand yeah. a lot more and of course modes like uh, FT8 the Dwayne is using behind you um, are uh, able to be copied through very high noise levels and, and low signal levels um, and to, to allow people to keep making contact even when the band conditions are not ideal for voice or, or even CW. Right. So, but you yeah, know, you were talking color. About the cricket, one of the things that really fascinates me is Hello? taking taking one device and let that device be the receiver and the transmitter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's techniques where you can uh, reflex it, you know, make the one device, the transistor, a tube, do multiple things, uh, amplify audio and also amplify RF and be an oscillator. Uh, at the times when you need it uh, for that. Um, <clears throat> you know, one of the other things that has changed a lot uh, are the uh, demographics of uh, ham radio operator. You know, back when uh, we got our license, not including you, Katie, you're too young. <laughs> But uh, I got my license when I was 16 years old, and back then, everybody was about the same age. And, mm -hmm. and as I grew older, I was always the average age. I mean, when I was 30, the average age was 30. When I got to be 50, it was 50. And it just kind of continued there. I mean, now... I don't know really what the average age now, but it's probably in the 50, 60 range. And, um, <clears throat> but the, the difference between now and then was that back then as a 16 year old, you know, we didn't have money to spend on ham radio and we had to build a lot of our stuff. And back then we could get a lot of war surplus parts and we could mm -hmm. build it. Uh, but now, the uh, 
average ham. You know, they're older, they're, uh, their house is paid for, their kids are grown. You know, they're a lot more affluent than they were before. So they have really, really nice equipment compared to what what we had back then. Uh, I mean, what, what do y'all think about that, about the demographics between now and, and back then? Well, I, th- I think, you know, you're right about being on the average age because we're following the population bubble of the, mm-hmm. the baby boomers, and you have this, this huge bubble of people uh, that have, have been moving through from, in the post-war baby boom. And uh, now you've got the, the millennials coming up and uh, threatening to take over from us, and uh, I hope they do a better job. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, well, I... I've had the the privilege of being involved with the Young Ham of the Year Award for some 20 years now, and I am always, always encouraged by the young people who are nominated, and you know, even those who don't reach the level of of winning the award are all doing impressive things. So I'm my my optimism for the future of Ham Radio is renewed every year when we start going through the nominations. Um, there aren't as many, you know, we, we remember being a lot of young people being hams when when we were young and knew hams, but that's because there were a whole lot more people of that age overall at the time. Right. Um, and there aren't quite as many teenagers right now, period. And they have a lot more uh, competing interests if they're interested in technology and stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, ham radio, I think, still holds out a unique opportunity to, to be an electronic playground and uh, for people to, to try new things and play with new things. And, and you have groups of young people uh, who are doing all sorts of amazing things with ham radio and... Uh, they're going to be our next generation of leaders. I think well, where I see a lot of the um, exciting forward motion with ham radio is in the the guys that are in their probably in their thirties, like like Josh and uh, Jason, who are you know they're sharing what they're doing and developing communities. So like you know Josh, who's been on YouTube for over ten years and has this ham radio crash course and does all this stuff you know live with Friday nights and. I mean, both of these guys have around, you know, 40,000 subscribers to their YouTube channels. I mean, that's just amazing to think that there's, you know, these thousands of of people that are all involved and interested on that really techie side of things. And and then there's also, um, oh, I hear Skype ringing some point. I'm not sure what's happening. Maybe Dave's calling it. Dave, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, another place that I, I keep an eye on regularly as far as hearing from what people are interested in is is Reddit. There's, um, you know, Reddit, for a lot of people know, is kind of what they call the front page of the Internet where you can read stories about anything and everything and mostly a lot of junk that you don't care about. But there's a lot of subgroups or subreddits, as they're called, and there's one specifically for amateur radio. And I believe the last time I looked, the membership was around 30, or I should say paid attention the there's about 37,000 hams in that group. And wow. a lot of them are posting um, intelligent questions. And what's really nice about it, there's there's no flame wars or insults going on. You know, guys will get, guys or gals will get on and ask a question about either getting involved with ham radio or they're looking at new, uh, looking at a oh. radio. They've got a mobile operation oh. up and running. They're doing stuff with wires Hello. or dmr Can and we're trying to figure out how to make it all work together and all of these other hams are coming in and helping them and you get these constant threads of activity that's all you know helpful and um really higher higher technical end type things i would say so it gives me the impression there's like a lot of software engineers and <laughs> computer science degree got type folks that are on there and i always feel a little smarter when i walk away because i seem to learn something new every day but like I said, one of the things I really like about it, and the moderators really do hold hold the crowd to it, is there's just it's not like some of the other online uh, forums where people get 
you know, nailed, you know, for not knowing something just because they're an extra, that it's, you know, you, it's encouraged to ask questions and learn from each other. And, um, and the things that people are doing with, just, you know, the Raspberry Pis and the, you know, the Pico APRS and the uh, SDR plays, I mean, all of these different products are just super neat and just giving people so many different ways to experience ham radio and yeah. uh, to me i think that's one of the really exciting things about the hobby right now is that hey, katie yeah yeah katie hey uh getting the phone system going here we've got a caller oh, great okay okay uh, go ahead hello, oh, hello. He, dropped. he dropped okay uh we'll try again uh, oh okay <laughs> which, which form which form were you talking about katie the um thirty-seven thousand. Uh, that's on Reddit. Okay. I can email you a link to it later okay. on. Okay. I think someone else you great. can someone else you can add to your list of thirty something people who are advancing ham radio is uh, Nathaniel W two N A F with the ham oh, yeah. site, uh, really promoting citizen science with uh, yep. getting hams and professional scientists together to uh, work with each other and. Uh, you know, for hams to collect data, for the scientists to analyze, and the scientists then returning the favor by right. providing information based on that analysis uh, yeah. to help us all learn more about propagation and, and other stuff. Yeah. Uh, oh, good. Thank you for bringing up Nathaniel. I can, can't forget him. He's definitely contributing so much to the ham community with his um, his background and everything from the eclipse that came out of that was super cool. And of course, he's a brand brand spanking new dad. That's too. right. Uh, so I, I've been trying to fix up his son with my granddaughter. I said, you know, if he goes for older women, you know, she's only eight weeks old, so it might work out in the future. <laughs> well, I want I want to comment on something that's got nothing to do with what we're talking about. <laughs> <clears throat> you know. There are so many people that spend a lot of time trying to hit a little ball, a little tiny ball, into a little hole somewhere. And I have never been able to understand that. You know, they started doing that. I forgot where it was, in Ireland or Scotland or somewhere. In Scotland. In Scotland back in the year 1200 or so. Mm -hmm. And now it's gotten bigger than ever. Right. And they keep they keep doing that, and why do they do that? They do it uh, because they want to do it. I mean, that's the only reason they're doing it. And I see ham radio is the same thing. Mm -hmm. People, I mean, ham radio will be with us forever uh, for the reason. The only reason is they just want to do it. You know, mm -hmm. so. Yep. I think it'll be it'll be with us for a long, long time, and there's so many different things that they can do, like you were talking about. Right. And there are but endless challenges, and yeah. uh, you know, uh, I've I've often compared it to like fishing. You know, if you just want to eat fish for dinner, you can go to the supermarket or a restaurant. <laughs> um, but if you want the the challenge and the fun of going fishing. And maybe catching something, maybe not. Uh, right. That, that that's that's for ham radio. If you want to make, a, if you just want to talk to somebody, pick up your phone. But if you want the the experience of getting your signal from here to there, and figuring mm -hmm. out how to make it happen, uh, then that's where ham radio comes in. Yeah. Like the other thing I really like about it too is are the the relationships that you develop because of this hobby. I realize there's certainly other hobbies that may, you know, go worldwide where people go to conventions and meet up with each other. But, you know, I was looking through uh, um, photos yesterday from um, our trip to Scotland last year. And because Dwayne, when we visited the Sterling Amateur Radio Club, uh, Dwayne got in the air and made about 100 contacts from there. And um, uh, we still needed to make some. So we made some QSL cards. So we were looking through our photos. And while we were over there, we had dinner with a ham who we met at the Florida Contest Group wow. dinner in, at Hamcation. Met him a couple of times, but he lives in Florida and over in Sterling, UK. So we all met up for dinner and while we were in the UK. 
and and the fun the, the funny thing about it was both Dwayne and he had their WNAW t-shirts on that day. <laughs> So we're walking down the streets of Sterling in, in Scotland, and these two hams are wearing their, you know, WNAW t-shirts, and it was just something that you know you brought together. And then when we went to the club, and uh, Billy McFarland was, who's one of the club members who I was interacting with on Twitter, we had never met in person, but as soon as you know, you walked into the clubhouse. You know, you're all immediate friends because of this one thing you have in common. And for me, that's probably one of my most favorite parts about ham radio is the relationships that come about. Uh, but because, you know, we, you may start with this one thing in common and then you learn others like Teresa, who's here in our chat room and helps out down at Huntsville. Well, we've discovered we're both yarnaholics and, and love crocheting and knitting. Uh -huh. And so we, yeah. we've developed a, a secondary relationship to the ham radio you know, I told her about this hat while I was making it, so she commented <laughs> earlier about it. But, you know, it's fun because, it, you know, sometimes it's the start of a discussion or start of a relationship that, you know, you, ha you start with the one commonality, the ham radio, and then you never know where it goes from there. Yeah. Well, I think one of the things that I've... Had... Go ahead, nope. Mark. Oh, I, I think that part hasn't changed where yeah, you right. develop relationships like that. But one thing, and it may just be the a sign of the times that we live in now, but uh, I just remember ham radio back when I was starting to be more polite than it seems to be now. Am I just imagining that or? Uh, I think ham radio has always been a, a microcosm of society as a whole. Um, and I think society was more polite 50 years ago than it is now. Okay, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we are part of the world around us, and there's nothing we can do about yeah. that. But, you know, Rich, you said um, you were talking about baby boomers. Now I know you're a young guy because I'm a generation before that, and I could never figure out what that generation was until I finally looked it up. I think that was called the silent generation. Not among hams. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, um, the things that have stayed the same in ham radio uh, are antennas. I mean, we still use dipos and verticals and yogis. That part hasn't changed very much. Um, I mean, um, uh, there's some new things, but really things like magnetic loops, you know, they were first introduced back in the late 40s, early 50s. Uh, I think the Army had a big loop, and there was a, a technical letter in uh, QST magazine from, uh, uh, I think he was in the Army, too, that had a small loop that he wrote about. But anyway, the antennas, I think, is one area that has pretty much stayed the same. Uh, what do y'all think about that? Mm -hmm. One of the first things I did, um, actually, with, with a KX9X and N1ND, my Elmers back in Connecticut, I built a multi-band dipole. And uh, I had a lot of fun making that, and I keep thinking I need to. I want to build another antenna, and we climbed up on my mom's roof because I was living with her at the time, and <laughs> got up on the roof and got it strung up there. And it was windy one day, and we couldn't. We had a problem with our soldering, so Sean brought uh, KX9X brought up a little blowtorch with the solder, oh. and I'm holding a box to block the wind, and he's. <laughs> it's a kind of work. But I tell you what, that antenna works, and I was how never more you, proud because I built it myself. <laughs> how did you make it multiband? I don't remember honestly. It was too darn long ago. It was well. There was some what, big center connector, and is it a fan uh, dipole? It very well might have been. Yeah, that probably was it. Just probably calling it, calling it the wrong thing as usual. Because those are, are multi-band. And, uh, yeah, I bet that's what it was. I have so, one of those up in my attic as my backup antenna. Oh, yeah. I'm getting asked, was an off-center fed dipole or a fan dipole from Brett? You know, I'm really not sure. So, 
I saw a question in here for Martin in the chat room. Let me see if I can scroll back. Someone was asking, um, I think it was a progress on one of your new products here. Do, do, do. Oh, here it is. Uh, Russ was asking how the MFJ1234 is coming. It's coming along very, very nicely. We hope to have it ready by Dayton. Uh, what that is, is a little box that you can connect to almost any radio and you can remote operate from anywhere. And all you have to do is log on to a browser with just about anything, your phone, your iPad, your Android tablet or okay. laptop or desktop, anywhere you have a internet connection and be able to operate your radio at with your antenna, you know, at your location. And um, um, uh, Howard Nurse, whose father used to be the president of Heathkit, mm -hmm. uh, has been developing all the software in California, and we're, we're making hardware. But uh, the software is almost finished. You know, I think he's uh, working on a help uh uh, the the HEP fi files for it, and but it it's working very very nicely. So all you do is log on to a website, and you can operate your radios. It, it'll be that's the reason we call it one two three four. It's mm, that easy. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Course, you know, that's another me... area that has changed recently is, oh, is yeah. the growth of remote operation and uh, being able to use the internet as a, a control medium. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the the thing the hang up has always been it's just been too hard you had to know too much to to be mm -hmm. able to configure the computer and all the settings to to get through your router and all that and all this has been solved with this new concept that Howard has developed well, it makes me think, um, one thing with this product, I'm going to keep my eye out for it. I was just recently interacting with a customer who has um, an elderly father who had health issues and is recovering um, in a, a nursing facility, but is due back home in March. And she and her brother are trying to find a way that they can get him back on the radio. And, but because he has a pacemaker, there's concerns about how to set everything up uh, appropriately. So I said, I bet, you know, setting up some kind of a remote operation might be just what he needs. And so I'm going to keep that, keep that one in mind for when, uh, when it comes out to get back in touch okay. with her as an option. Well, you, you know, one of the really sad things is um, when uh, the older guys move into a uh, uh, assistant living area. Mm -hmm. A lot of those places won't allow antennas of any kind. Right. And but they still have you know huge interest in ham radio, and this will give them a way to operate. Hey, Martin. Uh, it looks like we've got uh, a caller tonight. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Uh, go ahead. Okay. We got a caller. Hello, hello. Yes. Stand by a second. I've got him coming okay. in here. Is the caller talking or we, we can't Not hear yet. him? Or, oh. I think Chris is trying to get it all set up all right, for us. Well, I'm, I'm back. I'm back oh, here. Tom's oh, Tom's back. Oh, okay. Okay. How's things been running since I've been gone? We've been just Good. talking our, talking <laughs> off the storm here. Have you had any calls at all tonight? <laughs> yeah, we've had some, and then they've dropped. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, we had a few calls, and y'all were able to converse with them, I guess, right? No. Oh, no, 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 we just talked right <laughs> over them. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks to the new phone system. All right. Look, hey, it's an, I don't know where y'all are in the show. It's 10 after 9. We're just making it up as we go here, just Tom. Just making it up as yeah. you go, right. Okay. Uh, I, uh, let's see. I was going to say something. I don't remember what it was. 
Did I mention? Our pe- did I mention? Did I mention our Pico balloon thing? Yeah, uh, yes. I wanted to. No one, I, I've already oh, mentioned yeah. that. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> All right. Very good. Well, look. Hey, guys. Uh, it's, it's after nine o'clock. I think we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll we'll uh, cancel the show here for oh. a second. Uh, what happened here? Did Martin fail? Martin's oh, tablet fell. Too much to drink. Yeah. Yeah, hang, hang, hang on a second. No, no, hang no, on a second here. Let me, do one, let me do one My thing. My iPad oh. fell off the holder. Yeah, let, me do one, <laughs> let me do one thing, and we'll be right back. Uh, hang on, okay. hang on. Let's see. Let me see what I can do here. I'm trying to figure this out again. Don't go away, Katie and Rich and everybody. Right. Stand by. Stand by a minute. Let's see. Here, here we go. I'll be right back with you. <clears throat> Attention all hams. ICOM knows that ham clubs play a big role in bringing ham communities together to learn from their peers and industry leaders. As a way to give back and to help you on this mission, ICOM has launched a promotion exclusively for ham radio clubs and ham fest that they are involved with. By registering your club, you could also win ICOM swag, a Skype presentation, or for your ham fest, an ICOM booth set up at your ham club. Register now today for your chance to win. Go to www.icomamerica.com slash hams. Okay, okay, guys, we're back. Okay, uh, hey, we're not going to have a hangout tonight. And, and did you know uh, Google is getting rid of hangout? It's going away here pretty yep. soon. So we've got to look for mm-hmm. a way to uh, replace our hangout at the end of the show. Uh, hey, uh, I know that Katie and rich and and martin did a good job tonight keeping the show going uh while i uh, talked with uh, the people in there met some really great friends tonight some, uh, got some great new friends and uh, uh really interesting so we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh close the show tonight and uh we'll be back next tuesday that'd be uh what is it the fifth i think this is the fifth uh, you don't be driving to uh orlando yet and let's see you know hey hey next week next week tuesday the fifth We've got Asher, uh, Asher uh, Farhan coming oh, on. Oh, he is the guy that brains behind building the uh, the Bix, uh, BITX 40 and right. the uh, micro and the, the micro BITX. And uh, man, he's right. always it's always a great show talking with him. So he'll be with us next week. I want to say uh, good night to everybody, and uh, thanks for tuning in tonight. We really had uh, a great time, and uh, we'll see you next week. Don't forget, uh, we've got a podcast going. You, you can. Pull a show up if you're driving. Download the, the show. Uh, let's see. What else can you do? Oh, all of our shows are recorded. You can watch them anytime. You don't have to watch them live. Join us on our 40-meter net every Tuesday about 5.30 p.m. Central Time. And with that, I'll say good night to everybody, and we will see you later. Thanks, everybody. See you next week yeah. in Orlando. Okay. Bye. Good night. <laughs>